Wow, what a story. Now, if you follow my coverage regularly, the last few hours and even months haven't been a surprise to you. But what is interesting is the level of play revealed over the last 24 hours. I love that level of play. It's the perfect way to describe what's going on here. Well, that's been extraordinary. I believe that all four parties are going to come out of this quite well. I know, I'll explain in this video. And some of these parties have navigated this situation particularly aggressively and impressively because Disney has basically allowed two of its actors to shape their own exit narrative. Let's break it down. Is Pedro Pascal done with The Mandalorian now that he's the star of HBO Max's? Well, actually, it's HBO's. It'll air on HBO Max, but this is an HBO show on HBO's The Last of Us. Deadline, which broke the story late last night on the eve of Disney Investor Day. I wonder why it was important to get it out before Disney Investor Day. The plot thickens! But the article said that Pascal, quote unquote, could continue. That's the word they used, but that The Last of Us is his priority. They also said that Pascal recently became, and this is very interesting as well, available for a new series, which is interesting because it's highly unusual for the star of a flagship show to join another show, especially for a competing studio and service. Now, some of you have said, well, what about Oscar Isaac, who is reportedly starring in Moon Knight for Disney and Metal Gear Solid for Sony? Well, Metal Gear Solid is a movie, not a show. And as for Tom Holland, who plays both Spider-Man and now Nathan Drake, well, those are both for Sony. Uh, there is Chris Pratt, though. He is a good example. He stars, of course, in both the Jurassic World movies and Guardians of the Galaxy. But again, those are movies, not ongoing shows. But so this it's never happened with shows. But, you know, there's all, there could always be a first. Exclusives like this, though, usually come from talent's representation, or at least that representation is in the loop in leaking the story to the trade. So I believe if Pedro Pascal was locked in for Mandalorian season three, which doesn't seem to have any contracts in place based on the language that Lucasfilm used to describe the Gina Carano situation, well, I believe the article would have stated definitively that he was doing both if that was definitely what was going to happen as of right now. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how this develops. And again, as I said, this could always be, there could always be a first time, but it would be weird for him to star in such big, important shows for, again, two very competitive, uh, not only studios, but streaming services. And streaming services these days are in a quite the, quite the, quite the bloody fight for, you know, who, who gets the most attention. But I will say that Pedro Pascal's team has done an incredible job of securing a path forward for him no matter what happens. As The Last of Us is not just a hot show from the Chernobyl team and a top priority for HBO, but it's an incredible acting opportunity for Pascal where he'll be on, where, where he'll be on camera at all times. It also deepens his ties with Warner Brothers where he delivered the best performance in Wonder Woman 1984. He was incredible in that film and I think that the studio brass and everybody at the powers that be at Warner Brothers couldn't have missed that. And it gives HBO a Game of Thrones reunion, which people are already saying. They're like, excellent, it worked. Because Bella Ramsey is going to co-star. Now, some of you have said that you, while you love Pedro Pascal, you don't feel he's a fit with the role of Joel. I think that he's a great fit. I think he brings diversity to the show, uh, but he also builds on his recent surge of popularity with fans, and it plays beautifully into Disney and Warner Brothers' rivalry, the one that exists and the one that is very much a part of you know, even bigger in terms of popular culture. Two of my favorite tweets from last night when this news broke were uh, this play on his Maxwell Lord character's catchphrase. I, some of you took this quite personally, which is hilarious. They're, everybody's doing great. It's just funny. And then also I loved this. Uh, someone, said, someone said they were very excited for the Pedro Pascal single dad cinematic universe. I thought that was really great. Uh, and also, speaking of narratives, this is a great narrative for the uh, Last of Us show. Just overall, that show already has a great juicy story out of the gate. Now, as for Gina Carano, The Hollywood Reporter revealed in their coverage that Lucasfilm has been looking to get rid of Carano since November when she first became problematic online. I don't know why they didn't do it right away, but they decided for some reason to wait. 
And they shut, but they did shuttle plans to announce her, the Hollywood Reporter said, as the star of the Rangers of the New Republic back in December during their big company presentation. So since I'm sure she knew it was gonna be announced and then it wasn't, Carano for sure knew that it was only a matter of time until she was fired. Therefore, she got to choose the tweet that she went out on, or in this case, the Instagram post. It was like an Instagram, Instagram story. So she picked one that would, she felt would make her a martyr, and that seems to have succeeded. Gina Carano, cancel Disney Plus and cancel culture, have not only trended last night, but into today. Now, some people, of course, have hijacked those hashtags, uh, but still, you know, they're trending, and I'd say at least a fraction of the, of the tweets about them, you know, are in, are in favor of those hashtags instead of making fun of it. And her agency did drop her, but I think that what Carano is going to do, and the only move that she really has, uh, and I'm sure she knew this before she even put out that horrible tweet, um, although some people sh shockingly don't, you know, are, are backing her, uh, I feel that she will spin this into an ultra conservative pundit gig. You'll see her either pop on a, pop up on a conservative news network. I don't know about Fox um, because what she did was so incendiary, but she could show up on one of the new ones that's come up um, post the last election. And she could get a podcast. I think whoever represents that kind, of, that kind of conservative talent will likely pick her up if they haven't already. Finally, Lucasfilm, they're gonna be just fine. Now, Mando season three might continue, it might still continue, most likely with some changes. Although many of you said that you felt that the season two finale felt like a series finale, and that's what it could become. Uh, the show did such a great job introducing so many different characters and multiple spin-offs are already set up for some of them. Uh, that, that, so I think that the show will live on in that way. And also Star Wars in general has shows coming up with fan favorites. Like if there's an Obi-Wan show coming up, who cares about anything else? I mean, Star Wars' future on Disney Plus still shines incredibly bright. So bright, really, they're fine. Uh, as for Rangers of the New Republic, that show can easily still continue. And many of you already put together a fantastic cast just last night. Everybody wants to see Paul Sun Hyung Lee continue. I agree, he should definitely be on that show. Uh, I wouldn't scuttle, scuttle that. I mean, they have so many shows coming up. Do they need Rangers of the New Republic? I don't know, but I like this show idea so much that they should make it. So Paul Sun Hyung Lee, then another female actress that I wouldn't recast Cara Dune, but you could, you could introduce a character that fills a similar purpose. So a number of fans have already suggested Lucy Lawless. I love that idea. Lana Perilla from Once Upon a Time and Ronda Rousey. I think those are all great choices. Plus, this is my favorite. One of you suggested that Bill Burr's Miggs Mayfeld could be one of the main characters on this show as well. Wow, especially after his character's powerful development in season two, episode 15 with The Believer. That, I love that idea. To make that, I think that Rangers of the New Republic could not be a stronger show if they went down that path. So again, everyone's doing great. It worked out. So I think that it's just, it's another fascinating Hollywood story. So what do you think of all these developments? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.